Good morning. Welcome to Hope as you come up and find your seat on this good, cold, wet morning. Tell you what, um, as we celebrate this time of year, um, I'm just, I, I can't be thankful enough to my God, to our God, and all that He's done for us. Um, he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. There we go. Y'all stand up. Maybe it's the sitting down part, and it's cold and wet, but I just want you to. I just want you to just find somebody and just hug their neck, shake their hand, and just, I want you to reiterate that he is a faithful God. He's a faithful, faithful God. Faithful. Faithful. Woo. Even when I mess up. Faithful. Woo, woo. He's faithful when I'm wired.
Give him a hand this morning. We worship you, God. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the joy.
Perfect. 
thank him right now for the cross for the resurrection for the for him coming to earth for christmas for baby jesus for jesus coming to earth we just thank him for that right now we just bless you lord for laying everything down for us thank you for laying everything down nothing held back unconditional love thank you for being the savior of the world thank you for coming as a child Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
ground began to shake The stone was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King Has rendered you defeated Now forever He is glorified Forever He is lifted high Forever He is risen He is alive He is alive Now forever He is glorified Forever, forever He is lifted high Forever He is risen He is alive 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 He is alive, he is alive. He is alive. He is It's rendered you defeated. It's rendered you defeated. It's rendered you defeated. Sing it out for Now for. Sing hallelujah, 
broken. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Cause the lamb is overcome. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Cause the lamb is overcome. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Cause the lamb is overcome. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Cause the lamb is overcome. Shame is broken. <laughs> Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Cause the lamb is overcome. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Shame is broken. Lamb is overcome. And we sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. And we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is all time. Because we sing Hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, cause the lamb is overcome. free this morning just let out a shout that says Jesus is alive and you set me free freedom yes. freedom 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 yeah 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 just want to release this word someone saw an angel descending you know angels ascend and descend where God is in Bethel Jacob saw 
angels ascending and descending. He said, God was here and I didn't know it. The angel came with the bolt cutters. He wants to cut the chains off of us this morning. I don't know what kind of chains they are. I don't even know what kind are on me, but I know I've got some. I know I'm not as free as I'm supposed to be. And I just welcome the angels to cut us free this morning in every capacity that we can worship Him completely and totally as we should be able to do it. Father, in Jesus' name, let the angels loose with the bolt cutters in here this morning. Cut us free from everything that's holding us back from what Jesus paid for with His precious blood. In Jesus' name, your people shouted their agreement. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm free. Yeah, because whom the sun sets free is free at last. Whom the sun sets free is free at last. Whom the sun sets free is free at last. I'm free. Yeah, whom the sun sets free is free at last. Whom the sun sets free is free at last. Whom the sun sets free is free at last. I am free. Come on, whom the sun sets free.
fresh on me a new baptism this morning spirit of the living God fall fresh on me spirit of the living God fall fresh on me if you want it sing it out sing it out now spirit of the living God fall fresh on me A fresh wave, a fresh wave, a fresh wave, a fresh wave, a fresh wave. I just feel we're all supposed to sing in the spirit. And I don't know if that's new, but I feel like we're just supposed to sing in the spirit, and the Lord just wants to settle today. She began to sing in the spirit. I began to see the angels that were activated, and they were carrying banners, and the banners were over us, and it was Song of Solomon, the banner of love over us, and that he said, this is a season of love, and you're going to experience my love in a deeper way, and you're going to be able to carry 
my love in a way where in any situation you're in, I, there will be such a grace that you will not be offended because the love of God will pour through you and heal even families. Hey Amen. I want to say this. Uh, I heard this the other day that whenever the queen is in Buckingham Palace, they run up the banner. When she leaves, they bring it down. When Jesus came, the king is always in. He's always in the temple. He's always with us. Emmanuel, God with us. The banner's always up. The banner's always over us. We don't ever have to lack. We don't ever have to wonder. We don't ever have to go without. We don't ever have to uh, be concerned that we don't have enough grace. He's with us. Thank you, Jesus. We receive the love of God in a more profound way than we've ever received it before because we want to release it in greater ways than we've ever released it before. We want to walk in it. We want to be known as those who love each other and love those around us when it seems so difficult. Anybody can love when it's easy. We want to be able to love when it's difficult. In Jesus' name, amen. Before Dan comes up, I just want to share one thing. I just saw while we were singing in the Spirit, all our sins, past, and shame, big nail, is nailed to the cross. It's gone. It's left there. It's gone. He did it. I love this time of year, and I don't know that we really comprehend that love that Francis was talking about. Lord laid on my heart in Philippians where it says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. I looked up that word grasp, and that word grasp in the Greek means an object of desire or a prize. In other words, we don't understand the measure of love that was poured out on us through Christ's coming because he literally, it literally says, him being God was not a prize or an object of desire greater than his desire to come and do what he did so that he could be in right relationship with us. Being God was not a prize to the point where it was make him be unwilling to give it up. That's incredible. It goes on to say, it says, he emptied himself taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's interesting that Paul said, have this attitude. Have this attitude. What was the attitude he was talking about? That there would not be anything in your life that's an object of desire or a prize that would hinder you from being obedient to what God's told you to be. That would hinder you from being obedient to what God's called you to do so I just want us I want to pray over us right now because in this season that we're celebrating Jesus said that him being equal with God was not so valuable that it wasn't worth letting go of it so that he could come be obedient and he could have right relationship with us I just pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that in this season, Lord, that there would be nothing in our life that would be a prize or an object of desire that would become so valuable that it wasn't worth giving up so that we could be obedient to do what you've called us to do and be who you've called us to be. And Lord, we thank you that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses. We thank you that at the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare sickness has to bow. At the name of Jesus, we declare lack has to bow. At the name of Jesus, addiction has to bow. Lord, we thank you that your one act of love, radical love, in being obedient to humble yourself, even to the form of a baby, positioned you. Lord God, to become the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you can come. I was in Ohio last week. It was a great uh, time. I got to stand with a friend of mine and his wife. 
she had had a really bad scan and uh, she had spots appear all over in the scan and so they did all the other tests and um, you know it's interesting to watch how a lot of times God will use the same door that opened trauma and fear it, it, he'll use the same vehicle that opened the trauma and fear to slam it shut and so I felt like I was supposed to stand on Logan Harrell's testimony with them and on his testimony where his scan was bad and when the doctors got in there they didn't find anything and the Lord had given me a prayer strategy with Shane, his dad, and the prayer strategy was you break off trauma, you close every door of fear, and you to command the healing that Jesus paid for to be released. So I felt like the Lord said this is not um, a formula, but this is your strategy for this situation as well. And so with Elena and Mike, I stood with them on a daily basis. We prayed, and I broke off trauma commanded every door of fear to be closed that it released in them in their heart their mind and in their family and i commanded the healing that jesus paid for to manifest in her body so i was i left on friday and i got a call about 10 o'clock and the doctor had gone in to do the biopsy on her lung and when he took the first little bit of tissue from the biopsy and pulled it out he said this is nothing and he said we're not going any further come on so come on, it has showed up all over in her scans, and it was a big fat nothing. So I want you to know that everything in your life has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And I'm amazed at how amazing God is to take the very door that opened trauma and fear to use the very vehicle that did that to slam it shut. The doctor's diagnosis of her open this door of trauma and fear and the doctor's confirmation that she was healed slammed them shut <laughs> that's an awesome god so lord we just declare i felt like the lord said this morning to me he said it's okay to be afraid it's not okay to live in fear i feel like that's a word for somebody this morning you may be afraid right now because of the circumstances you're battling. It may be financial. It's okay to be afraid, but it is not okay to live in fear. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over fear, especially fear over finances in this season. We declare, Lord, any open doors of trauma, uh, any, any uh, Lord God, we declare that trauma broken off. And in the name of Jesus, we declare, Lord God, that everything must bow its knee. Yes, Jesus. Every relational issue, every physical issue, emotional issue, mental issue, and every spiritual issue, we declare we're in a season where we are celebrating the one who humbled himself and took on the form of a man, gave up his rights to being God so that he could win the victory over everyone and everything. We declare that victory released in this house this morning in Jesus' name. Just encourage you, if you have any end of the year giving you want to give, this is good soil. And recognize that seed produces based off of the fertility of the soil. And I believe this is good soil. So I speak a blessing over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all just sing this with me. Y'all know this.
right before Aaron comes, and if you want to just keep some background music, I want Daryl to come down and share a testimony um, that um, I feel like it, it's fitting this morning as we're honoring the Lord. Amen. I guess it's on. Good morning, folks. I have a, a testimony this morning about grace and mercy. And I'm going to try my best to get through this without being emotional. <laughs> Too late. My wife and I went on a short trip to see my mother in Texas this weekend. And on the way back, we started back on Friday morning. We stayed a day longer than we were going to stay. And on the way back, you give me a mic that shakes. I'm not in. Uh, but anyway, on our way back, the, the morning, early morning hours, the Lord came to me. And not a dream, but maybe you would call it a vision. He said, Daryl, you and Linda are going to be involved in terrible wreck he said but I got this he said the devil's trying to come against you so we left we normally start out our trips we travel quite a bit start out our trips with a prayer that assign angels to us and the people on the highway with us to keep us protected and to uh, shower us with his grace and his mercy we do that every time we leave. No matter what situation you're in, I want you to know that God has got it. Okay? He's in control, and he will let you know in some way. So anyway, we head out that morning. I didn't share this with Linda. I just knew that something wasn't going to be right. So anyway, we traveled down the road. We'd been on the highway for about two hours. And in my vision, I saw a tractor trailer. And so we were traveling down the road, and there was about four or five log trucks in front of us. Wasn't even thinking about it. God had given me a piece over this. So we were driving along there, and I was running. I very seldom go over the speed limit. I was running about 65. And I looked up at this new business. It was built up on the road. And I looked back, just like we always do. Just for a second, you look away and look back. And the tractor trailer had come to a stop in the middle of the highway in front of me. I locked them up, and I said, hang on, baby, here we go. So I locked them up. We jumped sideways, and I felt like I was supposed to get out of the brake. I let up off the brake, and the Lord shot us out in this big, wide, open ditch. Nice and smooth, but I never did. I never was able to stop. But we went right around that tractor trailer. I mean, just right around him. We never did pass him. He went on. He was stopping for somebody to turn. Now, folks, I totaled my truck. But Linda and I walked away from this, and God had it. As, he was, as I was going down this ditch, I had my, my foot on the brake the whole time, and I was sliding at about 60 miles an hour. I hit a culvert, a three-foot culvert, went up in the air, and I broadsided a truck making a turn to the right. And he came out of it. He was, a, he was a believer. Him and his family were believers. But he was by himself. I didn't have a scratch, no blood, no nothing on me or Linda, either one. And we completely tore that truck apart. So God's grace and mercy is sufficient. You believe, you listen to what the Lord said. Dan was talking about it in Sunday school this morning. Be willing to open your eyes and your ears to what God has to say to you. And he will be there because he's got it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay. I'll just, uh, okay. Well, thank you, worship team. Thank you, testimony. That was an awesome testimony. Give the Lord a hand. I mean, safety. It's safe to follow Jesus, you know. It is, and um, I just wanted to say thank you, worship team, and we had a drummer, but you just couldn't see him, <laughs> but um, yeah, it wasn't a CD, there was actually a person behind that wall, 
Um, and we um, do have a Christmas program tonight. I don't know if y'all noticed, but um, uh, it'll start at 6.30, and it's called What About That Baby? And um, I encourage you to come. We will have cookies and fun Christmas things, and it'll be a really good time. So please come. And if you are a first-time visitor with us, we so are so excited that you're here. Whenever you walked into the door, you should have gotten a bulletin. On the inside of that bulletin, it says Connection Card. I need you to fill that out for me and tear it off and take it to the resource room, which is this room right over here after the service, and we want to hand you a gift. We're so excited about what the Lord has in store for you, and I know that he has assigned you today uh, to come here for something special. And um, uh, I just um, I w also want to remind you guys that uh, we have fellowship meals, and we do have service this Wednesday. Um, and you can RSVP for our fellowship meals on that card, or you can uh, RSVP online. And it's super yummy food. We're super spoiled here. So um, if I go too uh, long into about how much I love the food, um, we'll be here forever, and y'all will just get hungry, so I'm just going to stop. Um, we do not have Sunday school for the next two Sundays for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Um, so you can come early, but we won't have Sunday school. Um, and... Uh, if you are in children's church and you're ready for children's ministry, you are more than welcome to be released. I know, Thunder, yeah. <laughs> Stampede. Oh, Y'all watch out. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, please walk. They're excited. All right. And I just wanted to also, I wanted to thank everyone who was a part of the Christmas um, banquet that we had. It wasn't that great. Give everyone who uh, participated that a, a hand. I just wanted to really thank our pastors for heading that up and, um, uh, for Shelly Owen, she decorated, and um, uh, the catering was awesome, of, of course, and um, everyone who brought food. I just really am thankful. It was lovely. It was so beautiful. I was just amazed, and um, I just love our community here. So I wanted to thank you guys, and I really hope you all do have a great season uh, going into the new year, and I pray that the Lord blesses you and that it will be an even better year next year. And, all right. <laughs> See you all next year. I'm just kidding. Amen. Well, Thank praise you. God. I was looking in the balcony because if we didn't have people in the balcony, I could move the pulpit down, and that would be better. But um, our balcony is such that when there's people up there, it cuts off the whole lower part of me except my neck. So I'm sure Walter and Summer don't want to just look at my head. There you go. Bless you all and others that are up there. So God bless you. It was a good time at the banquet, and um, it's a good season that we're in. It's an unusual uh, Christmas and the fact that uh, I'm just going to say this that uh, because it has it, there is a um, there is an impact from it when when the president of the country uh, sides with Israel and agrees that Jerusalem is its capital it releases something in the spiritual realm that has been bound up and we have a long ways to go as a nation but that that does release something and so Christmas the Christmas season is a season of high expectation anyway. If you um, come tonight, you'll see the children uh, in the play. Uh, your children and grandchildren at home or your brothers and sisters, you'll see the anticipation, the excitement, the expectation in their lives. And so it's a good season that uh, Jesus made possible in being the first Christmas gift, the best Christmas gift. And... Um, when we take the time to give him our attention and just set our affection on him this morning like we did when we went, you know, sometimes we can do worship and not even do that, you know. I have to battle that because I just want to sing the songs and I like the songs and this is just a good time and you end up um, missing the whole purpose of worship is to set our attention and our affection on the Lord. When we do that, his presence comes and when his presence comes, then you remember, oh yeah, this is why I do this. It's to because I need his presence. I need it manifested in my life. And so this is a season where um, I'm going to ask the, uh, I've sent the uh, scriptures to be put on overhead, but I want to, uh, and this is why I don't send them early usually, because they change right before I get up. So uh, we want to open with uh, Psalms 111, verse 2. And if you'll put that up, the, the works of the Lord are great, studied or pondered, by all who have pleasure in them. Uh, if we were ever going to choose um, something to ponder, contemplate, consider that the Lord has done, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the incarnation would have to be one. 
the cross would have to be one, the resurrection, which is represented by the crown, or him seating, being seated at the right hand of the Father, and being crowned Lord of all. You, you would have to say those would be three works of the Lord that would be prominent in our, in our consideration of all the things that he's done. And so we're in a season where simply because of the, the nativity scenes, because of the songs that we sing, uh, we have an opportunity to consider this work of the Lord called the Incarnation where the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He says if we'll ponder it, there'll be a pleasure in it, or we'll have pleasure from the pondering. There'll be a, a release of joy, hope, expectancy. Um, good things will come out of pondering the works of the Lord. Sometimes you're in fear and sometimes you have a foreboding about your future, but if you start pondering the works of the Lord, it will destroy the works of the enemy, which can be the, the foreboding thoughts, which oftentimes is a, is a hopelessness and a disappointment, a disillusionment. And so pondering the works of the Lord will, will cause His works to be overcome and overthrown as He tries to use those to come and... Um, and veil our destiny, to, to disconnect us from our destiny, to rob us of a sense of our, our purpose in the kingdom. You say, I didn't know I had a, a purpose in the kingdom. The least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, Jesus said. I think you've got a purpose in the kingdom. Uh, if your purpose is greater than John the Baptist, then, I mean, you're, you've got a purpose you need to be aware of and find out and, uh, and be connected with. And so... Uh, when the enemy comes in with his works of hopelessness and lies and, and uh, false conclusions about God and others and God's Word, uh, we begin to lose touch with who we really are. But we can reconnect by pondering the works of the Lord. We can reconnect by looking at this little nativity scene. I remember as a little boy in the Catholic Church, and, and it's uh, amazing, my little grandson, five years old, is in a, in a Catholic school. I, I was in Catholic school since I was in the eighth grade. One of the things we did do is we pondered the works of the Lord. We had a nativity scene that was almost life-size in our church. Had real straw, had a, had a full-size, you know, sheet. You know how the Catholics are about statues. You got all the statues of Mary and Joseph and all the stuff around the church. Well... We had good statues for the nativity scene, you know. And so, so I remember as a little boy going down there and looking, just marveling. Oh, wow, what a miracle. This is something, you know. And, uh, and just getting my expectancy stirred up. I want to uh, just title this message this morning, Tis the Season to Increase Expectation. Tis the Season to Increase Your Expectation. You can expect for more of God's intervention in your impossible situation for his um, interference in the schemes of the devil you can expect for more of that than ever before but especially in this season where expectation has been loosed because we're looking and we're pondering the, the, the works of the Lord it says in uh, Revelation chapter 19 the last part of that uh, verse 10 says worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy the testimony of the birth of Jesus has a prophetic essence to it. And he said, Paul told his spiritual son Timothy, he said, you can, war, you, can, you can war with prophecy. You can go to war. It's a weapon. The prophecy of the testimony, the, the spirit of prophecy on the testimony that's represented in the birth of Jesus Christ is a weapon we can wield toward the enemy. If God so favored us, he was willing to take on humanity and to come, and not only come as a babe in the cradle, which is amazing, just amazing. He laid down all his prerogatives of deity to embrace the limitations of humanity, come as a babe in the cradle, but he didn't stop there. You know, he was so much man that he could have chose not to go on to the cross. He had, he had a choice. He wrestled with that choice in the Garden of Gethsemane. Sweat blood, the Scripture tells us. Because he was so much man. He came, he was so much man. He was 100% human, but without sin. And he was 100% God. Yet he wrestled with whether 
to go to the cross or not. It was so difficult. He saw what would happen to him. And yet he chose that cross. And he chose, because he chose that cross when he was raised on the third day, it sealed the deal. Crucifixion was common in that day. It wasn't that a man got crucified. It was that the Son of God got crucified. And because he was proven and confirmed to be the Son of God through the resurrection, that crucifixion made a difference. It was a substitutionary sacrifice that, like someone said this morning, they saw, uh, Matt said, saw the, the uh, things that were written against us, the things that were against us were nailed to that cross in that, in that sacrifice. And so we have a, 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 great, a great thing to ponder and to consider because without the incarnation, without the Word becoming flesh, without Jesus coming as the only begotten Son of God, there could not be a crucifixion that mattered any more than all the other thousands that they were crucifying. But because He did, because of this, then we could have that, and because of that, we have a, a, a king who says is eternally seated at the right hand of the Father and lifts up holy hands, interceding on our behalf. We have someone praying for us in heaven right now that is a glorified man, and he'll always be there. The incarnation was an eternal thing. He'll never say, okay, well, I got that done, now I'm going to go back to being just completely 100% God. No, he'll always be the 100% man and 100% God, glorified, and he's in heaven. When we go to heaven, there's a man there named Jesus. And that just somehow gives me comfort. And I, I, I realized uh, over 10 years ago, one uh, night in the middle of the night the, uh, during the Christmas season, the Lord said, study this miracle. And I, I found that verse where it said, he that ponders the works of God. And I realized that fami fa the, the fami familiarity, fam being familiar with, with the miracle and the fables that surround it could cause me to be blinded to the benefit of considering it. And so uh, sometimes familiarity is created. I'm just going to talk in tongues next time I get to that word. The, the next, uh, it's created by we have heard the story, read the story, and so we get familiar with the story. And we go, ho-hum, I've heard that before. But the, the crazy thing is that that can be broken off also by continuing to read the story with the awareness that you have to be open to things that are buried in it you might not have seen before. So you read it humbly. You say, okay, I've heard this a thousand times. I've seen it a thousand times. But there might be something buried here that God wants to bless me with this season. And so we read it with that intention that this, is, this thing's not drained yet. It'll never be drained. Talking about how Jesus came to earth, became man. It'll never be drained. But it's a, it's a story, it's a testimony that releases a spirit of prophecy. I pray that while I'm speaking this morning, a spirit of prophecy would begin to move in your situation and break those chains and let them fall like we were singing about this morning. Hindrances, there would be a release in your life well, for some reason, you come out of here with an enhanced faith and you're able to believe that that mountain will move when I speak to it. I'm going to be able to decree, declare, and see light shine on my ways. And there's going to be things happen that didn't happen before, but I've got an expectation for them that they're going to happen this time. Dan's testimony, Daryl's testimony, we need to let those testimonies just that prophesy over us. Look, when you pray for someone sick again, when you get on the highway again i'm so uh glad that um uh, that you know he had that testimony because i pray for people that travel during this season there's so much travel that there would be uh angelic help and protection and people would come back healthy and whole and just need to buy a new pickup right daryl so yeah praise god amazing god is good the the thing i want to do in uh 10 minutes is just um, that that'll be the first miracle of this season in my life and yours uh, I want to I want to look at this um, incarnation story from just the three encounters 
of the angel Gabriel. And um, the way it begins, in Luke, uh, we have the most detailed account of it. Matthew only commits four, uh, eight verses to it after the genealogy. It's really, he really sums it up. But Luke did a study. He's like the Dr. Watson of the New Testament. And he did a study, and he interviewed all those that were around that would have a factual account of what happened. And he recorded it very detailed so that we would have an accurate view of what happened. And so in Luke chapter 1, it begins, and I cannot read all this, but I'll just um, refer to it. We don't have time. But it begins in thir around 34 B.C. And in 34 B.C., there was just a big mess. Um, Herod was a descendant of Esau, and he was king over Judea. The priesthood uh, had become so politicized that they weren't even of the lineage of Aaron anymore. And in this mix, mixed-up mess, there was an elderly priest who had become jaded and skeptical because his wife Elizabeth had been barren. They couldn't have children. And he was, it was his rotation to uh, offer the sacrifices in, in the temple. And uh, as he's there at the altar offering the sacrifices, Gabriel uh, is, has been sent by God with a message for him. Now remember, it's been 400 years since God has spoken to his people. You're never, how many know, you're never in favor when you're getting the silent treatment. God's been silent to his people for 400 years. And he breaks that silence with his messenger angel. This is the same angel he sent to Daniel that spoke about this very situation to Daniel that referred to Jesus as the Son of Man and Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man in the Gospels 85 times, the Son of God only about six times. He referred back to what Gabriel said and revealed to Daniel and, uh, and, 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 the, and the people he was speaking to, the Jews, they knew what he was talking about when he said, I am the Son of Man because he was the one who was going to come on the clouds of glory. They knew who he was referring to. So this same messenger angel comes to Zacharias, and he appears on the right side of the altar, which was believed to have been reserved for when the Lord shows up. He's going to show up right there. And so Zacharias was completely startled, frightened, confused. And Zacharias, you know the story, prophesies or tells uh, I'm, the angel Gabriel tells Zacharias, uh, your, your wife is going to, and you are going to have a son. His name's going to be John. Name him John. And he's going to be the a forerunner for what God is going to do in the earth for the Lord. And uh, Zacharias is doubtful, um, uh, and uh, the way he responds is not the response the angel Gabriel was looking for. And the angel has the, angel has the power to, to cause him to be mute until he says at the, at the uh, dedication of John, his name shall be John. And all of a sudden he could speak and he begins to prophesy. But God broke his silence with his messenger angel with a message for this elderly priest and his wife. Um, six months later, this same messenger angel shows up to a little teenage girl named Mary. And I picture Mary praying in a garden somewhere because she was favored by God. She obviously had a holy life. And so I just pictured her praying however the, the, the Jews pray. And the angel Gabriel shows up and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You have found favor with God. And she, she's startled by the statement and confused by it. And, um, and, and he goes on to tell her, and you know the story, that... Um, you are going to conceive, and the child that you bear will be the Son of God, and he will deliver his people from his sin. And um, she said, she made the statement in an incredulous sort of way, just uh, not in an unbelieving way, but how can this thing be? And the angel Gabriel says to her, with God nothing will be impossible. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and, uh, and you will conceive, and with God nothing will be impossible impossible and that word nothing where, where Gabriel speaks it there in the Greek is no rhema no freshly spoken word of God 
will come without the power to fulfill itself. We sometimes hear God speak and we go, how can this thing be? How, how will it happen? And he, we don't realize that the fact that he spoke gave power into that situation for it to happen. His word has power. Mary embraced that power when she said, when she said back, let it be done unto me according to your word. If that power's there and it can be done, then let it, let it happen. And so we see in the example of Mary someone who believes an impossible, in, incredible thing, and because she believed, we have uh, God was able to uh, commingle His DNA with Mary's. Somehow, this is crazy, I'm telling you, we've heard it too much. He commingled it right there in this little teenage girl. And then if you read the, the, the story, uh, I believe it's in Matthew, where... Um, he talks about Joseph's situation. Now, Joseph is betrothed to her, and his, she's pregnant. And she's saying it was God. Well, I wonder how many times that's been used, you know. <laughs> Angels had to come with Joseph and give Joseph instructions all through the first three or four years of Jesus' life to cause that family to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing so that every prophecy about Jesus would be fulfilled. Joseph didn't know how to do that. He says he's a just man, but he's just a man. So the angels come in dreams. They come in, in visions. They come and they say, it's time for you. You need to go to Egypt. You're going to need to come out of Egypt and go to Nazareth. You need to come out of, uh, you know, he's going to be called a Nazarene. He's going to be, uh, uh, I'm going to call him out of Egypt. He was born in Bethlehem. How do you do all that? And make all that come true. Well, he needed angelic encounters. So this incarnation seems to be Gabriel's assignment because he came to Zacharias after 400 years of God's silence. One of the things he quoted to Zacharias was the last words God said in the Old Testament, I will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children. Those were the last words God had spoken 400 years before, and those are the very words Gabriel opens up his message with to Zacharias. Then he comes to this little virgin teenage girl, and he gives her this profound message, and she receives it and conceives, and nine months later, in um, Luke chapter 2, it's business as usual for the shepherds, they're out in the pastures at night watching the flock. There's nothing changed in 400 years. They're cold. His daddy did it. His daddy did it. Back through the, the lineage of shepherds. Nothing happens different. And it says suddenly, suddenly an angel of the Lord stood before them. Now I believe it doesn't say Gabriel, but I believe it was Gabriel because every time Gabriel shows up, people are afraid. And, and the first thing he says is, fear not. So there's something about him that gets our attention really, really uh, strongly and causes us our first response to be one of fear, and that's what happened to the shepherds. Um, he goes on, and he tells these shepherds, I've got good news for you of great joy for everyone on earth. It's amazing that he brings to them the announcement of the birth of Jesus that has happened in the manger and uh, tells them <clears throat> this is going to be what confirms it for you. This is going to be a sign to you. You're going to go to that manger and you're going to find a baby that's been placed in the, the cattle trough, the trough they feed the animals with and he's wrapped in swaddling clothes or he's wrapped in the rags or the, or the claws that they normally wrap a little baby lamb in. And so he's, he's, he's born and wrapped up like a little lamb. Isn't that interesting? The sacrificial lamb. <clears throat> he said, you're going you're gonna to get this sign because I don't want you to think there's been some kind of a mass hallucination happened out here in the fields where you get kind of kooky anyway watching the sheep all the time. 
somebody accidentally dropped the peyote buttons in the hot tea, you know, and we're all, we're all seeing things. If you know what a peyote button is, you, you shouldn't have went there. <laughs> but he says, okay, so, so then to emphasize what he just told them, these angel buddies show up all over the sky, and they're singing and they're celebrating, and they're shouting about this, glo and glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And one version says, His peace and goodness are, is toward men everywhere. Uh, the, the NIV says, On earth peace to men on whom His favor rests. In other words, something's shifted, something's changed. You can hope again. You can expect again. Because God's speaking again and His favor is toward you. It's toward everyone. I read uh, a little uh, testimony of an 18-year-old Muslim girl who was so um, jaded by the way life happened around her, the pain and the, and the things she saw. She chose to join ISIS so she could kill people, 18 years old. But her mother brought a stack of books home, and in that stack of books was a Bible. Isn't it amazing how just reading the works of God, <laughs> pondering the works of God, as she read it, it came into her life, and she accepted Christ. And when she accepted Christ, she went to this little group and wanted to be baptized. And as they put her under in a, in a, a blow-up tub, they put her under. She manifested demons coming screaming out of her. Don't you think you'd get demons if you, you were so far gone you want to join ISIS to kill people? I would say there's some demonic influence there. But because she pondered the works of God, she received an encounter that set her completely free. Still happening today. His favor was toward an 18-year-old Muslim girl who wanted to kill people. But his favor was toward her. If she would embrace it and receive it, you're never too far gone. That was Bill's word the other day, the other Sunday, last Sunday, about how God recalibrates like a GPS. You've missed this term, but I'm recalibrating. You can come back to me. It's never too late to come back to God. The thief on the cross, two minutes before he's dead, I just say two minutes. It was, it was shortly before he would die. He said, he's, he, leave him alone. He's the, he's the king of the earth. And God said, recalibrating. This day you'll be with me in paradise. Thought it was too late, but it wasn't too late. He made a right choice, a right decision. The works of God affected his life. This is the season to increase expectation. God's favor was manifest when his word, personified in Jesus Christ, came to us. There's no other way he could show greater favor than to send his word in, 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 in human form. He's saying, look, I'm speaking to you. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 says, in in past days, at various times and in various ways, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. And His Son, it goes on to say, is His express image or the expression on His face toward us. The prophets were wonderful. The works that happened to the Isra Israelites were wonderful. But there was still too much room to get the wrong perception of his expression. Jesus came, and through his life, his ministry, his death, his burial, his resurrection, he made the expression of God towards us very clear. He's smiling, and he loves us. There was a uh, story of a, in uh, the Revolutionary War, the soldiers were crossing a a cold river in the wintertime and a soldier stopped by the river and the officers rode horses and they were coming by on the horses and the soldier finally asked one of the officers who was George Washington he said can I get a lift across the river and George Washington said yeah come on while he was on his horse he said why did you ask me and none of the other officers 
He said, the expression on your face already said yes. All the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, through us to the glory of God. He's got a yes on his face for the things that are good for your life. His expression towards us is Jesus. You say, what would, what would Jesus do? Well, one thing he would do is he would manifest love, patience, favor, life, liberty. He would do all those things. He would be that. And when we see that, we've got to realize this is what God's saying to us. He's not saying condemnation. Someone had a word this morning that had something about uh, break off the shame. Shame comes from condemnation. He's not saying condemnation. It doesn't mean he doesn't convict us. And I'll share this in, in close. I was driving down the road one day, and I was thinking about uh, having just, I, I was working for a, a company, and we, they had a time clock, and when we uh, would line up at the time clock in those days, there would be a line of guys, and uh, these guys were not uh, all your your Christian uh, milk toast, uh, mamby pamby type guys. They were uh, rough old boys, and uh, there at the clock they would tell their jokes, and some of them were really funny, but they weren't Christian jokes. <laughs> and I laughed really strong about one, and I think I even threw a few things in about it and made it even funnier. And I was driving down the road afterwards, and uh, the Lord said, you know, um, it was like the, he was sitting beside me. He said, you know, you laughing and entering in on those jokes, they think you agree with that. And I just got under condemnation. I just said, oh, man. I said, I can't do this Christian thing. I said, my mouth is getting me in trouble all the time, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to control that. I talk to, before I think, you know, and, and I was just going on, you know, and the Holy Spirit said, hey, 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 wait a minute. You know why I brought this up. And I did. I said, I know. I repent. And by your grace, I'll not do it again. He said, now let's get on down the road. He doesn't want you condemned. He wants you con uh, responding to the conviction so the enemy can't beat you up with what the truth is. And the truth is I'd messed up. But if I don't respond to the conviction, the enemy can use the truth against me. But now you know what I tell the enemy? He said, you can't control your mouth. I said, go see Jesus. I've talked to him about it. <laughs> My hope is built, stand with me, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Ministry team, you come. If you need prayer today and you want someone to agree with you, if you want us just to agree with what's already happened this morning where some chains were broke, or you felt them fall away, or you felt an infusion of hope, listen, in this season, even come tonight and watch those children and let their expectancy just get off on you and infect you. And so we thank you, Lord God, for this people. I thank you for their hearts, their hunger. You said the hunger would never leave empty. You'll always fill them. And so let them go out of here this morning full of a new and fresh expectancy for what you're going to do in the situations that seem to have no answer, Lord. I thank you that you're going to move in them in a way that will blow us, continue to blow our minds and to continue to make us realize Ephesians 3.20, I will do a sitting abundantly above and beyond all you can ask or think, is really a verse we're too familiar with. <laughs> it's really one that, that takes us way out there. So we receive it, Lord, and give you the glory. Your people said amen. Amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, you come. Man, I can't believe you were able to follow with the drum. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. 
we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah 